Bass Drum of Death, Say I Won't, album review, let's chat about it. Hey friends, what's going on? John here from What's Spinning here tonight to chat about this latest album from Bass Drum of Death. These guys are some garage punkers out of Mississippi and, you know, <clears throat> I, don't, I, I wasn't originally planning on reviewing this album, but truth be told, there was a time where a Bass Drum of Death was a band that meant a lot to me. And I mean a lot. I've talked a lot on this channel about my growing up and my obsession and just real addiction to just sweaty, wild, wild-eyed, and just grimy garage rock. And Bass Drum of Death was a real sort of gateway drug to the rest of the genre. They were one of the first bands I had checked out in along those lines. Getting into their music led me to get into bands like the Black Lips and the OCs. And I still think to this day that their debut album GB City doesn't get enough credit. Still to this day, a, a, a lot of this album, most of this album ends up on my cardio playlist. And while maybe not as integral to the genre as like Ty Seagal's Melted or the OC's Master's Bedroom, this album was a fun album. It was short, it was compact, it was just sweaty, anthemic, really catchy garage tunes one after another with a lot, not a lot of filter, honestly. And if you liked that album, I honestly think that you'll like their 2013 self-titled album too. But that's not a bad thing. I still enjoy that album quite a bit as well. It's everything that's happened since that's really soured me on the band. 2014's Rip This had me honestly fall out of sync with the band seemingly overnight. This was the band's cleanest album to date, not nearly as grimy or as gutty as their first two albums, and a whole lot shinier at the end of the day. And for me, I don't want to be that guy, but, you know, just hearing the shinier production had everything just crash down around me as far as the band's structure. I immediately saw so many cracks in the foundation, especially some of the songwriting on this album, so much so that I just kind of didn't listen to their first two albums for years, which, you know, eventually I did come around to. And 2018's Just Business, I named it one of my worst albums of the year, the year that it came out. So much so, so much show that uh, John Barrett leads singer and songwriter John Barrett uh, joined a very exclusive club and that is one of very few artists that responded themselves to a negative review from me. At the time I had called the album some watered down royal blood warship which I guess was a little harsh but John literally minutes after me posting my review was very quick to you know respond and point out that he himself had done some songwriting for Royal Blood. Okay? Now, what leads me here today? Um, I'm going to be honest. I heard the single Find It a couple of months back, and I thought it was one of the better tracks that Bass Drum of Death had put out in a while. And I guess maybe my morbid curiosity got to me as well, because I wanted to see what the band was up to, and uh, they're, they're certainly up to something. I mean, early on in the album, we get tracks like Head Change, and honestly, very quickly, it's become very apparent we've hit a wall, folks. In the last few years, you know, while hearing the Find It single made me think that maybe the band had gotten back to their roots and, you know, found some of the energy that they lost over the years, uh, you know, maybe that would translate to the whole album, but clearly nothing has changed. We get a crunchy, bulky riff, which is, I mean, I guess it's okay, but then the songwriting comes in and we have really just hit rock bottom. This is so black and white with no personality. And, you know, in their early days, their songwriting wasn't anything special, but at least the songs were catchy. You don't even get that here. This track just blows right by, doesn't stop me in my tracks at all, and sets the tone for what is a pretty abysmal album. Say Your Prayers is just so cookie cutter. Like, this sounds like John Barrett went on a Queens of the Stone Age binge or, like, listened to them for the first time and said, hey, I, I could do that. No, you can't. The result is a soulless sluggish, bluesy track with no emotion or no passion. And like, the songwriting was pretty rough on their last album. I think it's actually gotten worse. In the bluesy breakdown we get towards the end, it's just so plain. It's got no personality to it. It doesn't stick out to me at all. Uh, Keys to the City is bad for just an another reason whatsoever. I think this track is just really, so, probably the worst track here. Mostly due to just how cringeworthy and downright creepy the lyrics get here. Like this chorus, 
Big yikes. And before I forget to mention it, the energy on almost this entire album is the equivalent of, like, I don't know, like, smoking two joints and ordering way too much food and then feeling really bad after you eat that food. It's pretty pathetic. Weight is no better. I mean, by this point, we're halfway through the album. And I'm struggling to fall asleep like I actually needed to get myself a coffee. This track is over three minutes long, and I can't tell you the first thing about it. And then we get to swerving. And listen, if I was 18 and you sped this track up and you put a little bit of a hazy production slant on this track, maybe this could have worked. But this, truth be told, is kind of pathetic and just a really bad rehashing of their early days. It just comes off as tired at the end of the day and, once again, kind of cringeworthy. And all this is such a shame because, like, the four tracks on here that are really decent... Maybe some of the best tracks they've put out in 10 years. Like Find It, for example, one of the lead singles from this album. I'm going to double down on my stance on this track. I think it's great. It's got the energy. It's got the big hook. It's sweaty. It's manic. It's upbeat. It's mesmerizing and just an all-around great rock single. Like, if you heard this track and didn't listen to the rest of the album, you would thought that the band is just really rejuvenated right now. And No Soul, it's actually pretty good, too. It's got an edge to it. It's got that youthful sound. The band sound intact. And on top of that, this is easily the bleakest and, dare I say, sexiest track that John Barrett and company have put out in years. See, a modern sound from the band can work. Hell, I'd even put this on my cardio playlist. And White Vine is one of the best tracks here. Now, this is an old school acoustic bluesy jam with one of John Barrett's best performances here by far. He sounds the most in his element here too. Like the passion here, it's real. I mean, certainly much more than the rest of this album. But on top of that, this track comes off mature. This sounds like where they should be. Nothing comes off tired or overstated. I like this a lot. And while I originally wasn't feeling it, Say I Won't is easily one of the sleaziest tracks here. Pretty sinister as well, so much so that it really does stand out from the rest of the album. Hell, there are some moments on this track, like you'll get like a spicy lick or something, that are actually pretty cool. It's also got like this ruggedness to it, where I don't know where that was for the rest of the album. Would have loved to have heard more of it. No, it's not terrible, but God, the rest of the album, man, it really is. So much so that the next time Bass Drum of Death come around with a new album... I really can't see myself reviewing it. We get to No Doubt late in the album, and I'm like, I'm not kidding. This sounds like 10 other tracks on this album. All these riffs are just blending together at this point. Like, yeah, I'm, I'm joking that I can't tell them apart, but I actually can. This is more of the same overly macho punk blues and garage blues that they put out on their last album. But this time around, the songwriting is so much less intact. The energy is down. The production sucks. I'm honestly lost for words, and Everybody's Gonna Be There is not much better. Like, this track certainly shows them trying to put in a little effort to bring in a little oomph that shows them once again bringing back the youthful energy, the sweaty energy of their early work. I mean, picking things up a little bit, uh, you know, that should certainly help, right? Wrong. It's really rough. This titty production, God. Yeah, that, that sounds fine, boys. Don't, don't do anything about that. And Too Cold to Hold as a finale? Eh. I mean, honestly, it's, it's got one of the cooler riffs on this album, that's for sure. But everything else about this track is flat, annoying, lackluster, too little, too late, goofy and exhausted as well. Let me tell you, this is a band that's been going for a long time. This is their fifth album. They should not, at this point, be ripping off bands in different genres. Listen, if you like this, you like it. But next time Bass Drum of Death come out with an album... I'm not touching it. I'm out, guys. I'm out. I'm sorry. I'm just not feeling this album. Yes, the three or four tracks on here that are really good may be the best tracks that they've put out in 10 years. And you can quote me on that. But the rest of this album is tired. It is exhausted. It is rehashed. It is not sexy at all. It is pretty damn cringeworthy. And it's actually got worse songwriting this time around. I'm sorry. I'm not... Not feeling this one, guys. I'm feeling a strong three on this album, but let me know what you all think down below. If you like the video, be sure to give us a like, give us a subscribe, and let me know down below what you would like for me to chat about in the future. And until next time, have a great day, friends.